tell me all. If you think back through your life, what was the greatest heartbreak you've ever had? Well, I'm just coming out of one. So... The most recent always feels like the worst, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like a like a comet going through the sky, you know, it has a trail of stardust and fire and, you know, this incredible energy behind it that's, that's you know, painful because, you you know, you're going through the stratosphere at some great miles per hour and you're feeling all that emotion as you go through, your heart's pumping and um, it might be the one I'm just going through right now. Especially when it happened, which is six months ago and uh, you know you're in disbelief for most of the time that it's actually real that it's actually happening you don't you don't quite believe it and also the whole relationship was like that anyway but that's what kind of made it volcanic in the first place you know sexually volcanic spiritually volcanic transformationally kind of powerful and um, I yeah, the only time prior to that was someone, but it's weird. It it felt more natural then. Felt like there was an end. I mean, I, it was weird because the t only time it happened before it was when I was thirty, and I thought I was gonna marry someone who I went, who was in my school, and she left as I arrived. So she was about six years younger than me, and um, she was beautiful. It was total love at first sight when I first saw her. It just Boom, smitten. And then it took about 12 years to finally get together. But when we did get together, it was this glorious English, amazing summer, beautiful summer. And it was just like, at last, we made love. It was like incredible. It was like everything I dreamed of and more and just beautiful. And I saw myself living with her down the road from where my parents are in the countryside in this empty house that was once upon a time owned all the land all around, it had been empty for 17 years. And I grew up see, seeing this empty house, and I thought, okay, that's where we're gonna live. That's where we're gonna be. I could hear the music of what was gonna, you know, be the, the music our children would hear. And, and, uh, and then she was unfaithful. And she, I think she was unfaithful because she wanted to cut that cord because she knew she wanted to travel for like two years and then settle down. But that was like the break because it had to be broken for her to actually move on. And I was kind of devastated, but kind of resigned in some way. And I just went to Ireland immediately. I just boom, went, went away and researched a film and got out of that space. And somehow I felt I was on a spiritual path. And it was earlier on, you know, I was in my 30s. But what happened just now just in the last six months was perhaps more devastating because I was preparing to be a stepdad. And I had a stepmother myself who brought myself and my brother up from a really young age. So I know the value of having a really good step parent. So I was preparing myself. She had two kids um, and those two children, you know, I potentially would be the, the the parent of, you know, the guide of, and I was imagining, you know, one was interested in photography, so I was kind of imagining that I'll be helping on film sets and encourage her to pick up not just a, a, a camera, but a video camera and start, like, actually really getting into a craft. You know, she's young, she's only, like, 13 years old, and just, like, just get excited by it, and, and you know, all the qualities of what that would actually mean for me to step up in my life. Because I've been a bachelor now, and I'm 51. So, to take on a mum, her two kids, and create this dream, which is a magical dream, was such a huge thing for me. It was unbelievably huge. A great risk, because she's from San Francisco area, Marin. So for her to come down here with her two kids was a huge step for her. But I really believed that she would do it, and I believe we'd be together, and I believe we would create this dream ourselves. And as soon as 
I bought this place. Um, I caught limes. And she had limes. And there was this huge kind of like denial. Like maybe, possibly caught it from her. Huge denial. Can you catch it from another person? Technically, yes. Really? Yeah. I thought it had to be transmitted through a mosquito bite, through a tick bite. It's, so that's how she got it. But, you know, if you're, if you're with someone sexually for a long period of time, basically you can catch it too. Got it. So, but she'd also been married for 19 years prior to, so she also wanted to, she missed out on her 20, so she wanted her freedom. So it's very, um, I am 99.99% certain, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no ticks here, and I never, you know, it's in Southern California, there's, there's, there's ticks, but not the ones that are infectious of the Lyme disease. It's Northern California and East Coast where she got it. So, yeah, it's tragic. It's tragic. Um, and, you know, I also wanted to be a father. And we talked about having this golden child, a beautiful golden child, and, you know, as well as being a stepdad, like, having our own kids together. And, um, and Lyme's means you, you can't. But I went the natural route, and I discovered I had it. And as soon as I did that, I actually cured myself of it. I found that two weeks ago. So, of course, I you know wanted to celebrate, but it also meant I could be a dad again. Cause you can't be a dad with limes, and it also brought like a lot of you know getting the truth of of the fact I could I could have had a kid with her, that we could have gone through this natural process together. Had she come here, it's like the what if, you know, we've been together and gone through this natural protocol and actually nailed it and trusted in the divine, trusted in God, that we were gonna actually move through this together and then have a kid. It was, you know, almost like my lack of faith, I thought, I saw that moment of crisis, because when I caught it, I thought, oh God, what am I gonna do? And now I've got it, you know? And it was, at that point, all the shutters went down. She locked me out of her life completely. She couldn't cope with tears. You just don't know what's stored in the heart. You have no idea what's stored in the heart, and it comes out at certain times. So when I was physically close to someone else for the first time since this wonderful, magical woman from Marin County, you know, I literally, it's like my heart cracked open, and I, I just like had floods. I mean, it wasn't even like the rivers of tears, like what I'd been holding in for so long. It just came, just came out because we were so close and connected. And um, the heart is a funny thing. It's 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 so powerful. And there is a a place in Santa Cruz called the Heart Math Center. Actually, measures the intelligence of the heart. There is actually an intelligence inside the structure of the heart. Is this living, beating? wildly intuitive function that the heart has that no one really, you know, might say in poetical terms, but in actual terms, in, in actual, in actual the science of the heart, there is an intelligence. So it stores stuff that you don't even know is there. And I think when you've been through like all the emotion of the, of the it was a roller coaster relationship with her anyway. You know, we went to India together, she actually got pregnant with me very early on in the relationship, but it was so early that she uh, took a pill. And I thought I was going to be a dad for like a oh, Christmas day in 2013. You know, so all these things, the emotion of, you know, and when you think you're going to be a dad when you're in your 20s, it's not quite the same when you think you're going to be a dad when you're like hit 50. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, just holding that inside your heart is, is in there. And then, she met someone else like straight after me, also called my name, Martin. And he's not even from this country, he's from somewhere else. And it was bizarre. It was very strange, very surreal. So it's been a lot of, lot of pain. And I think 
just being creative has helped heal that. Um, surrounding myself with people who I love in this house has, has helped, you know, because it just brings that animation back to where you live and always by yourself. I've had to be quite a lot of times just get into nature and I'm living, thank God, on a kind of nature reserve so I can get out and just be myself. I've got this marvellous dog, where is she? She's somewhere. A husky, white husky, like a wolf, which has been my dream for 10 years to get a like Siberian wolf like husky. I trained her with the wolf actually. And she's magical. So I've got this magical dog who's with me as well as I got from a puppy. So I'm being a father in one respect. And I kind of prepare myself to be a be a dad. And I guess it, everything just makes you stronger. And and you know, I think it's good as a man to actually unleash those tears. You know, to let it out. And I was by myself when it happened. And I didn't tell that the, the woman who I was kind of like getting closer to that what well, happened, I told her later actually. Um, and I still haven't really, even after six months, really fully sexually engaged with anyone completely. It's like being sort of playing around, but not really kind of, my heart is still, if, if, if she walked through the door right now, I'd be totally ecstatic. I'd be totally like, oh my God, she's here at last. She did it. She broke through. She, she came, you know. And at the same time, it's like letting go of that and saying that's my illusion. You know, that's my perception. That's what I would love. And maybe she doesn't want to make the great leap to come to Southern California. Maybe she doesn't want to live in this piece of paradise. Maybe she wants to stay safe where she is. Maybe she wants to, you know, not have a child. So maybe where she is is perfect for her. And it's surrendering to ultimately to what is the highest, but also what ultimately is the ha will be the happiest for her. You know, not what will make me happy, but what is the happiest for for her. And um, it's a hard place. You know, you kind of get there in the end because because at first you're so emotionally tired. So actually, finally letting those heartstrings go. And I've actually done some healing work. I've had healers come in to help heal my heart, literally, because it was so painful. And uh, several people have been, you know, cut these invisible kind of cords. Um, so I can be free again, you know, and just begin again properly. Um, with all that surrendered space to actually allow a goddess into my life, a true goddess, and know that the gifts that I, I received from this magical woman were there to inspire me to bring to the next relation, great relation in my life. My beloved. She, I wouldn't have bought this place had, it, had I not believed that she was coming with her two kids, because it's a big old place. It's got four bedrooms, and before I was living in a two bedroom place, and I anticipated you know, Venice is on the canals, it's really beautiful. But I was anticipating someone to come who would have a child. So that would have been perfect. So this having this kind of you know great expansion, this huge expansion, but it's coming at a time where I'm about to launch my company called Love Earth. And that's gonna naturally mean I am expanded in terms of business, in terms of my life, in terms of all my relationships and people and the net effect we can have on helping causes and artists and entertainment with 20,000 grocery products and everything that's going to happen around the world. I don't even know what's going to happen yet. All the movies that are going to come out of it. Um, same time, I actually created a film with her, with this woman from Marin. And it was, it was about teenage sexuality, which is a very hard subject because... She was terrified about her eldest daughter going into middle school and then all the boys having watched pornography online and then looking at her daughter. And she said, I said, well, what's there about sacred sexuality for teens? What, what's their education? I, I don't know. I'm English. I don't know what's available in America. Maybe you've got a really good sex educational curriculum. And there, there really wasn't. There's nothing. So we actually created a whole curriculum. We created a movie screenplay. And now it's part of a big $20 million budget that we're putting in with different movies and, and that we put together for our company. 
and we've just written up the business plan for that. That's been done. And we might be into production of that, you know, as soon as, as soon as that's funded. So it could be three, four weeks time from now. And you'll so, be working so, with her. Well, she's a mum. You know, she's not. She just happens to be brilliant at writing. That's why I actually fell in love with her. Because I discovered that she was a brilliant writer. And when I knew that, it was like, oh my God. Now it's like, now I'm really in love. That was, that was actually the icing on the cake for me with her. That I, could, that I saw this innate creativity that she had that she didn't even know that she had. She had no idea that she could write. I just thought, like, she's a prolific reader, but she didn't know she could write. And, and she's a teacher, she's a yoga teacher as well. So she's, she's extraordinary with kids. She's brilliant with children. Um, at the same time, the dark side of her was that she liked to drink a little bit, liked to go to bars a little bit, and probably a little too much for me. And I think she's sort of tempered that down to a degree. On the other side, she's a kid's yoga teacher. So she's like, it's a real kind of mix. And she's picked someone she says is exactly like her husband. Kind of this Jewish business guy who likes to party a little bit. Kind of a good guy. Decent business, you know. But And I'm like the spiritual, more maverick, creative, entrepreneurial business guy. But I kind of want to give back to the planet, want to do good. And that's where I thought we would come together. I thought she would... I, you know, she kind of dreamed that she would get back to the land. She said that was her childhood dream. So I was kind of like listening to that, you know. She said she wanted to maybe go to Africa, maybe even adopt a child, you know. And I said, well, that's, that's my dream too. This is amazing. But I think she just got used to where she was. And I think she didn't want to make that. She kept blaming me for being safe. <laughs> I'm not really... Like, I mean, in terms of like making safe decisions, but she's made the ultimate safe decision by staying where she is. And maybe that's what that will make her completely, ultimately happy. And I hope she is. I, I'm at last reaching that surrendered space in my heart that I'm, I am more content than knowing that she's happy rather than wanting desperately her to be with me. I sort of beginning to see there's other possibilities of love out there that are kind of sort of magnetizing to me a little bit and although I'm just kind of staying completely open right now it's uh I can start just to begin to see like a horizon and it really does take I think oh well for me she leapt into the next relationship within weeks it's taken me months she just was able to do it and I, I think though it's because so much of what I was creating here was my vision for us that every time I was putting a mural up or getting a pillow with a heart on it. I, I was doing it because I, that's what I was doing, dreaming that she'd come back. Thinking actually if I put it all into place and make it perfect for her, as she, as I believe she would love it, that she would come. Somehow she'd be magnetized here. And she just hasn't been here once. She's communicated with me three times I think at the most. And I actually got a tattoo of two dolphins coming together on my shoulder. And, uh, and I did it in San Francisco, and I, I said, she blocked up all my calls, and but this one seemed to get through on an email, and I said, I'd just love to see you. So I saw her, I saw her after four months. We just chatted under the stars, and nothing happened physically, but it was a huge catharsis for me, of just like actually letting go and telling her what I, what I believe and what I thought. I got limes, she couldn't face it. She couldn't face it. That and, and the leap of faith to come here. She was just about to come. She was just about to come. And I found out I had limes and that was it. All the walls went down like, like, I might shut all the blinds around me. I was totally by myself. I literally did, I had to deal with it by myself and couldn't talk with her. I tried to communicate with her and nothing. And then I started hearing that she started having these various, you know, um, balances as it were and it just it was really painful it was like super painful uber painful and it was like just just holding it in very 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 um tightly and then finally when after four months i finally meet someone who's kind of attracted to me and then like gets a bit closer and then we end up in bed and we're naked and but it wasn't her 
you know, so nothing actually totally happened in that instant, except the next morning my heart broke open, um, and all those tears were just like released, it was very uh, tough, and uh, I guess, you know, it toughens you, it helps, I think 